Hello, Revolve Bible Church, and welcome to 5-Minute Connect. Today, I want to talk to you about absence from church. The word church is ecclesia, and it means the ones who are called out. And although the church, in one sense, is a universal body and is made up of every Christian around the world, the church also, in another sense, is a local body. That is particular members, specific pockets of fellowship around the world that represent the body of Christ. And when the called out ones come together, that is when the church is meeting and the church is conducted in the physical gathering. The church is not a building, but a people. And this means that because we are unable to gather on the Lord's Day, Sunday, A true church service is not happening during this time, as sad as it is to say. We are not physically gathered together to worship the Lord on the Lord's day. So we are enduring a season of absence from church. But the fact is, as church is not being conducted, how should this impact the people of God? There's an old proverb that says, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I think this proverb is telling as it relates to what absence from the church will do in the hearts of true believers. It will make their heart grow fonder in longing to gather with God's people on Sunday. And I want to point you to an area of scripture that sheds light on this, particularly in 1 Thessalonians Chapter 3, as Paul, Silas, and Timothy express their longing to see the believers in the city of, of Thessalonica, to be physically present with them. And really, what happened in them, what was cultivated in them due to physical absence. In 1 Thessalonians, this is a letter of longing written by both Paul, Silas, and Timothy to Christians in the city of Thessalonica. And as recorded by Luke in Acts 17, these men were used, particularly Paul and Silas, to bring the gospel to this city. And as people were getting saved under their ministry, the church had formed. But shortly after a brief stay there, they were forced out by Jews out of the city who were hostile toward Christians. So they left very soon. And in this letter, they expressed worry about their spiritual health and eventually sent Timothy to check in on them. And that's really what we see in chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. But particularly in verses 1 through 11, we notice that their physical absence from the church, it prompted seven things within them that wouldn't have been heightened if they were not physically separated from one another. And the first is accountability. Verse one and two of chapter three reads this. Therefore, when we could endure it no longer, we thought it best to be left behind at Athens alone. And we sent Timothy, our brother and God's fellow worker in the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you as to your faith. Paul and Silas were worried about their spiritual health because they were not with them which led them to send Timothy as an accountability to strengthen their faith and to see to it that their eyes were fixed on Christ. And this is also reiterated in verse five when they say, for this reason, when I can endure it no longer, I also sent to find out about your faith. Again, alluding to Timothy. The second thing that had heightened in them was fear and concern. There was an apprehension they had, again, about the spiritual condition of their brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 5 says, For this reason, when I could endure it no longer, I also sent to find out about your faith for fear that the tempter might have tempted you and our labor would be in vain. There was a heightened concern that these men had about their spiritual stability. They were worried about them. 
And thirdly, we find comfort and relief. Verses seven and eight, for this reason, brethren, in all our distress and affliction, we were comforted about you through your faith. For now we really live if you stand firm in the Lord. What Paul and company is saying is we were relieved to hear the report from Timothy um, uh, about your spiritual strength. And he even goes so much to say in verse eight that I can get on with my life now. I, I, can, I can live. I can move on knowing that you are doing okay. So there was relief and comfort in their hearts over their sanctification. And fourthly, we find thanksgiving arose. Verse nine, for what thanks can we render to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account? There was a deep in gratitude to God for his sovereign hand upon this, these uh, people as they were separated for them for a time, thanking God for his sovereign care over their spiritual souls. Fifthly, we find joy in verse nine. Uh, he says, for what thanks could we render to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account? There was a sense of joy and rejoicing over God. Again, his care over the Thessalonians. And we find prayerfulness in verse 10. As night and day, Keep, uh, we keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. There was deep in prayer uh, to God, dependence upon God uh, in, in light of God, asking God to protect them, but also to reunite them. And then a general longing to see one another. In verse 11, now may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord direct our way to you. And it's again reiterated in verse six and also earlier in verse 17 of first Thessalonians chapter two. May we seek to not waste this absence, but may our heart grow fond in these particular ways for our faith family as we endure a time of physical separation. May God bless you during this time of absence.